All right. <clears throat> uh, just finished this Persian cat from Hobby Boss, uh, one in forty-eight scale. So built the kit, uh, did a bit of an inbox review, uh, and now I'm just going to chat about uh, how it goes together. First thing that I've done is I've just sort of like knocked, I've looked at my photos uh, and I've put a bit of a sort of positive and negative list together uh, just to help you because I know that quite a few people have said, oh, I've got this kit in stash and, uh, you know, I want to build it. So if you've got it in your stash and you want to build it, there's a couple of points that you need to watch out for. Uh, some positives as well, don't get me wrong. Uh, it's not all, uh, it's not all bad. Uh, ejector pin marks then, uh, we'll start there like I always do, ejector pin marks, uh, so in your vertical stabilisers, your horizontals and inside your wings you've got ejector pin marks uh, on this particular kit that I got, uh, they had got uh, a little bit more excess plastic, so where you've got your circle, uh, where it's come out of ejection system, uh, there's, a, there's a, like a little sort of wisp of plastic you've got to sand them off because if you don't when you come to sandwich your two halves together uh it, it sort of st stops it from marrying up properly so you've got to make sure that they're right so one of the first things that you do when you get your kit out just check uh, to see what you've got there uh issue number two well landing legs reason i'm saying landing legs is because you've got to put them on at stage seven in the build and you think, well, you know, surely that's quite way back, but it's not. It's it's not even halfway. Uh, I think there's 15 stages to build. So to put landing gear on at stage seven, uh, it can cause you a bit of an headache. Uh, it's not the fitting part of it that's really really nice. It's it's the painting part because once they're on, obviously you've got to paint them white, but you've got to be able to paint your body as well. So that's a bit of a issue. The nose, uh, that th th there's a step on nose, and again, when you come to put it on, you've got to put it on symmetrically, uh, because if you put it onto one side, you've got a gap at this side, and if you put it onto this side, you've got a gap at this side. That sounds, you know, like normal, uh, but but there is a step. Might only be half a mil, but at one in forty-eight scale, that mil, half a mil, it, it's massive. Armament, I was a bit surprised with armament that you get with kit. Uh, I'm not a professor when it comes to the Iranian Tomcat, uh, but I did do a little bit of research and it would appear uh, that the Iranians decided to put some surface-to-air missiles on their Tomcats. Now, the only thing that I can think, and I don't want to be disrespectful, is but, you know, they, they spent that much money on actually buying the air, aircraft that they said, right, armament, well, we ain't got none. So what we're going to put on it then? Uh, we can't send it up empty. Uh, and somebody's obviously said, oh, well, we'll stick a couple of them on. Surface-to-air missiles. We'll just sort of like, you know, uh, adapt the pile on to hold this missile and send that off. Uh, <laughs> that's what they must have done, I don't know. When I've, bu I've built them, painted them and everything, when I've come to attach them on, they just look so ridiculous. Uh, that's the right word as well, in my opinion. They look ridiculous. Uh, I had to go into my, sta my spares box uh, and find a couple of uh, proper Tomcat missiles. Uh, armament, and then last bit of negative there that I've got. I've covered landing legs, nose, ejector pin marks. The last one, what colour call out? Now, there's no uh, XF number for lower body, uh, but when, when you come to do the... Well, it, it says Mr. Lobby, uh, Vallejo, ta well, there is a TAM here, but it's dashed out. So when you come to use one of them conversion charts to, to have a look, it says it marries up to XF65. Never been. Well, I'll show you. Uh, anybody that says that that's XF65, uh, you'll know that it's not. It's XF80, which is what I ended up doing. As far as positives are concerned, because you spent 45, 50 quid on this, so you want it, you know, something to be right, don't you? Uh, wings, slats and flaps positionable, which is brilliant. 
uh, you get engines, separate engines with the kit that you can build, paint, detail. Um, slight negative on that is that once you've done all that work, and I did it, because uh, I'm a stickler for if it's in the box, I'm doing it. Once you put them into bird, you can't see them. Positive, the tub, loads and loads of detail. I'm sure that all the control panel knobs and switches and dials, you can sand them flat. There's a photo at your part. To, to get aftermarket uh, and that it, the door looks superb I, I, I wish I could get them but unfortunately for me it's grey dry white dry black turn my blade upside down once that's dry and just gently scrape that black off because the raised detail on the buttons <coughs> it'll reveal the the whites and greys underneath <coughs> excuse me which is fine, it's fair enough. Uh, the, uh, let's have a look, two flat, all oh, right, so <clears throat> the kit is basically two, two halves. So all that back end and all the front end, you build them completely separate. Uh, very much like the Tamiya kit. Uh, the positive was that front end, uh, will it marry up into those, uh, that, that back end? Uh, and hobby boss absolutely superb salute you what an absolute beautiful piece of plastic engineering uh as daft as it sounds it, it's such a good fit you don't even need to glue it the front marries to the back so well i did glue it don't you know uh it but it does it marries in so well it's brilliant uh some nice photo etch you get radar uh and you get some uh on the canopy when the pilots are sat inside it and they've got the canopy and they push it forward and pull it down it, all, all the little connecting pins that's in there that's actually a photo etch part that locks in uh fantastic brilliant and then crew steps cannon slats and flaps uh loads and loads of detail for me i think if you've spent money on buying a kit and it's got all these options that uh, are accessible to show, then that's what you want to do, isn't it? Uh, all that front end there, all those doors there, all open. Uh, if you've not got, if you're not brave enough to have a go at that cannon housing, uh, or it's just not for you, then fair enough, you can have them closed. Uh, but if you want to uh, do a nice Tomcat, then you know you can have them open. It's different to Bombcat, that's all closed. I'm not sure what it's like on the Tamiya. Instruction book then, I have butchered it a little bit because I ended up using the pages that were uh, not applicable to me uh, to, uh, to mask off. And if you've seen the pictures on Facebook, then you'll see. So stage one, it starts off with the seats, uh, and, and again, it's very, very simple. It's your box standard seats, two sides, uh, the uh, where you put his ass, uh, the back, the head rest at the back, uh, pull canopies, uh, and the bottom one, the ejector. They're all box standard, they're all in. Uh, Colour call-outs are all okay, uh, you get all that. Uh, some decals for that as well. Uh, first issue that I got was straight away onto stage one and I, I, I've laboured on this before that if you're a novice builder and you're sort of thinking I want to get back into model building what do I want to build Tomcat there's you trust your instructions to direct you in, into the put the right part into the right place so I'll offer that up where's it gone it is there so I'm going to offer that up <clears throat> And you can see there that I've written issue, right? And that is for that little part there. Okay, so it's a control stick. And again, when you are building the kit and you think, right, so I've cut the part off the sprue and I want to glue it in and dob a glue and control stick in, it's in the wrong place. The holder it tells you to put it in to is actually designated for the Rio's uh control panel because it's the same kind of locator at the bottom so you've got two holes sort of like one at front and one at back and on instructions it's telling you to put it into this one so you put your control stick in then when you come to put your next part of the control 
uh, fascia on, actually it's that that goes into that back hole and the control stick goes into the front hole. Does that make sense? So you've got to be wary of that. Uh, that's on page one, stage one. Uh, the sides of the control uh, buttons and dials, it's all little, little bits that you sort of glue on and they're all all right. No problems there. Photo X, like I said, would have been better, uh, but it's not for me. You put uh, all your front uh, office in. It's a box standard office uh, seats, uh, control panels. You can go to town on that. You can drill them out and you can uh, gloss them and put a little bit of plastic in front back and there's separate, uh, separate decals for all the dials and one thing or another. Uh, which I put on, all nice and tidy. Uh, still on stage one, I'm going to show it again. So down at bottom, right there. So can you see that middle bit there, right? And I've wrote on there. The sprue gate is on the weakest part. So it's funny how you've got two uh, quite substantial pieces and they're married together with one tiny little flimsy little bit of plastic. And you'd think that the sprue gates will be here, but they're not. There's one right there in the middle. I looked at that and I thought, that's going to snap off. And it did. A uh, bit of Loctite though, that sorted that out. Uh, still on stage one, it's telling you to do uh, radar down at the bottom corner. Look, okay. Stage two is telling you to build your front landing gear. Uh, your front landing gear housing and locate it. You don't need to do that. Obviously, you need to build the housing, which again is a box standard thing. It's like a ceiling, two sides, a front and a back that makes that sort of box section. It's got the holes in. Then you would build your front landing gear and slot that into the hole. But you really don't need to put that in. Not yet, anyway. Uh, one little misdemeanor there on stage two. Again, I'm going to offer it up. Stage two, this, and it's telling you there, look, to put your refueling probe in. Nah, you don't need to do that. That comes way back. Once you've built your tub and your front landing gear, front landing gear box that you've built then goes underneath your tub. Uh, you just sort of super glue or just glue that in. Uh, and then you've got your two sides, then look down at the bottom, it's telling you to sort of like close it all in. If you're putting radar in at this stage, that's when you need to put that in as well. Bit of photo etching there. Did look nice, but I wanted nose closed. Stage three, one of the really endearing features about this kit uh, is that particular piece there, look on stage three. So you've got full open cannon. Uh, or you, uh, you've got another option at the bottom, look, you can put all your doors closed if you want. If it's a bit scary for you, if you think, you know, I ain't got skill for that, skill's the wrong word, I ain't got patience for it, or uh, my hand shakes when I'm painting one thing or another, you have got the option to put all them doors on, simple as that. Uh, personally for me, if it's in the box and it's a feature, I want to show that feature off because as far as it's my Yorkshire brain you see my Yorkshire brain says you've paid for that you're showing it off not wrong with that uh, stage four is wings so it's your, just your usual your two halves uh, it has got a little bit of a rod in there and again I'm going to offer it up so your rod that goes in there look it's a very very thin piece of plastic okay got to be extremely careful when you come to cut that off because it will snap uh, I can't remember whether mine did or not and a, a couple of little holes to drill stage five is the same uh, but for the other side uh, a comment that I've put there nice <laughs> yeah so it must have been good stage six is engines you get two engines with this kit uh, now funnily enough you don't get a dolly with it uh, so I suppose it's why would you do that why would you supply a kit with two engines and not, then not have something a dolly to show it off on uh, it, it made no difference for me because they were going in anyway 
and if you find me on facebook instagram any of them you'll see that i detail those engines completely with different tones of aluminium silver jet exhaust gun metal this blow that all sorts of things you do get a little bit of an engine management system that sits on top and that's nice because you can detail that uh, sticking with stage six is your air intake area and again it, on, on your tomcat build it's it's the usual it's the back end of them that's molded onto the actual fuselage and then you do get that little part there and if you look on youtube for my inbox review you'll see that they come shrouded in uh, a little bit of material just to keep them safe uh, one part to mention on the after build review on that on the intake system uh, I need to offer it up is let me just see if I can find it it's there I'm going to leave it up uh, you can see I've written fiddly there probably spelt it wrong uh, but you can see just down here there's some tiny tiny little rams uh, they are very very fiddly so you need to be careful there if you're a 172 builder uh, you'll breeze that, uh, but if you've got hands like me, uh, I move mountains of snow with one shovel, uh, <clears throat> it can prove a little bit tricky. Stage 7, this is what threw me a little bit, Stage 7. Uh, if I start at bottom at page there, look, you can see, so you've got your bottom fuselage, your engines, uh, your intakes, and also you've got your landing gear uh, and it's all got to sort of sit inside there before you put your top half on and it really worried me that because i knew straight away i thought well if i put landing gear housing in that's absolutely fine but if you come to put landing legs in you don't have to put your wheels on obviously but how do you paint the fuselage and not paint the landing gear fair enough you can paint the landing gear in the colors of the aircraft but then you need to paint them white so you've got to uh, mask off behind the landing gear put your masking tape obviously onto the fuselage uh, but the landing gear itself if that's the fuselage side like that and you've got a landing gear here like this that's coming down there's a pin like that and it sticks in so you've got to get some tiny tiny little bits of masking tape and and, and sort of mask around it to make sure that you you don't paint that so what i did was i painted the entire bird uh, the back end uh, and, and masked it off uh, completely before i started painting it white once i painted it before I masked it, uh, apologies I've skipped a piece, I glossed it. I glossed that part because sometimes Tamiya tape can peel paint off. Uh, not dramatically, but enough that it's just like, oh God, you know. So I, I glossed mine just to protect that paint underneath. So stage seven, uh, like I said, landing gear, engines in, uh, intake in, no problem there. Stage A, little bit of a misalignment again that I found uh, on this particular build. Uh, stage A is telling you to put your air brake on and these couple of bits of antenna here. These two, <clears throat> they do have to go on. Uh, you don't need to put the air brake on at that point. Uh, there's nothing else that, uh, you know, is sort of like round it that stops it from going on later. You can put it on later. Uh, and same with antenna as well stage eight is putting your wings and your wings just sit uh, on a couple of locators one two and they just sit on okay on some tomcats you've got that sort of a system uh, where it's a gear on this particular bird it done it's just two shrouds and two holes and they just sit in which means as deaf as it sounds wings move independently but Hey ho. Stage nine, that was stage eight, once I haven't got my glasses on. Stage nine is uh, vertical stabilizers, and again, it's just your normal two sandwich dives. They're no problem. Now, you don't have to put them on now either. 
uh, you can paint them completely separate because the fit uh, of the stabiliser onto the actual fuselage is so good, uh, don't need no filler, the, uh, the, the gap uh, is an adequate size that in one in 48 scale it would sort of replicate a tiny little gap uh, on a real bird. Uh, and that also aids with decal placement a little bit later on because on the back of a Tomcat uh, there's a red band uh, sometimes there's a red band and it goes it goes underneath so you'll you'll figure that out. Stage nine is exhaust. On this particular kit you get uh, open nozzle and closed nozzle. Some people go for one open one closed. I never do that. I either go both open or both closed. On this particular one, I've gone both open. Uh, reason that I've gone both open uh, is because it's uh, obviously static. It's sat down. Uh, I know that they do uh, both uh, closed nozzles uh, when they're putting real power out to take off. Uh, and mine's not taking off because it's got canopy open and all these doors open. Uh, you can attach your uh, horizontal uh, stabilizers at this stage. Again, you don't really need to. Uh, you can save them till later. Uh, again, stage 10, a little bit of a misalignment. So this particular kit, you've got to think of it as in it sort of like comes in three parts, three main parts. So your first part is all your nose section. Your second part is the top half of your fuselage where you know what's happening really and your third part is the under section uh, that's got your landing gear on and your arrestor hook and your vertical fins and all that sort of stuff air intakes uh, the misalignment is on stage 10 it's telling you to put your nose on your canopy in open or closed position all kinds of things for a novice builder uh, or somebody that's never built a Tomcat before, you really don't need to do that. Not at this stage. They're going to get knocked and they're going to they're going to break off. Okay. Uh, stage ten down at bottom, we'll call it stage ten B. That's the marriage, and that's the part that you really want to go well. Uh, and it's uh, <whistles> saluting to Hobby Boss because superb fit, absolutely superb. Stage 11 is gear doors uh, and a few more bits of antenna, uh, a rester hook and that kind of thing. Stage 12, I'm looking at that like there's a page in that in. Stage 12 is just fitting your pylons and your armament. Uh, how does it compare to a Tamiya? I don't know because I've never built a Tamiya, uh, but I've heard the good. How does it compare to uh, the Academy Bombcat, which I have built? it's a better kit uh, because you get more options you get options for gun open and slats and flaps and one thing or another uh, and refueling probe so it is a better kit in my opinion it, it does retail for I think between sort of 45 and 55 quid uh, compared to the 69 79 80 pound for the Tamiya one uh, I, I don't think I build the Tamiya one in 48 uh, I've built a 32 F16, loads and loads of 32 tornadoes for people that know me, uh, and also a 32 F4, so if I were going to build a Tomcat again I'd want a 32, uh, simple as that. Apart from the uh, misalignment on colour call out, uh, stage 1 that control stick telling you to put it in the wrong place, Everything else is okay. I think you've just got to use a bit of common sense. That's what you've got to do on this particular build. Uh, because there are things that it tells you to do in such a certain sequence. And that are a complete mile out. Uh, the colour scheme. Uh, I went for the Iranian one. I've, I've already done a grey one. Uh, so I wanted something a little bit different. Decals were absolutely fine. Uh, I did get some aftermarket decals from eBay uh, just things like the little sort of bombs uh, and the uh, sort of killer thing there and the skull and crossbones uh, I checked myself looks like a Tomcat goes together all right everything's okay there's no real dramas with it you know it's not gonna there's no 
Apart from that nose being a, a bit of a fit issue, but you can get around that dead easy. Uh, there's no massive headache sort of tackle, if you will. Uh, I'm not sure if I'd build it again. Uh, I say that every bloody time, don't I, when I built a kit, would I build it again? I suppose that's the wrong thing to say. The, I suppose the thing to say is, if you're, if you're umming and ahhing and saying, I want to build an F14 in 48 scale, and I've got a choice of three, I've got an Academy Bombcat, and even that is now going for 45 quid plus. I can build the Hobby Boss one, <clears throat> and it doesn't have to be in that colour. Uh, they also do a blue, I'll show you. Also do a blue one. Uh, and again, roughly round about the same price, you're 45, 50 quid. Or I can build the Tamiya one. Well, I suppose if you've got the cash, you build the Tamiya one. But if you're like me and you're on a bit of a budget and let's be fair wives and two kids and all that sort of stuff and bills to pay uh if it's going to be a toss up between your academy one and this hobby boss one then i'd definitely go with this one uh that's the other scheme okay and that one <coughs> i haven't got my glasses on so i'm not even going to attempt to read that so it's all right it, it goes together okay like i said a couple of couple of issues just you know just your, your sort of standard stuff and a couple of misalignments that the, the wrong color call out and one thing or another uh, but if you use a bit of common sense and you think well actually if i do that now then how am i going to do that and how am i going to get around that uh, and you'll be able to see it through no problem it's a lovely kit nice photo etch decent decals goes together well uh, and, and no real complaints I suppose if you're going to say, right, well, score it then, mate, score it out of 10. Well, a 10 out of 10 would be flawless, wouldn't it? It'd be perfect instructions, perfect decals, perfect fit, no filler whatsoever, no sinkholes, no ejector pin marks and all that kind of thing. So it's not a 10. So is it a 9? I think the things that I've mentioned just get it underneath a 9. I, I, you say an 8, a solid 8 out of 10. Uh, and for a kit that's as old as this is to get an 8 out of 10 uh, from somebody like me you know I'm not best builder in the world it's just my hobby uh, 8 out of 10 the same line on canopy as well uh, which you can sort of use the Tamiya compounds to get off uh, that's a note to remember uh, but yeah still 7.5, 8 out of 10 uh, worth the money it's alright I probably won't build it again Simple fact is that I've already built it now, and I've done it. Uh, but if you if you're out there now and you're thinking, I definitely want to build a Tomcat, Academy, Hobby Boss, or Tamiya. If if the Tamiya one is just just out of reach, and you think, well, it's a toss up between the other two, then yeah, I'd say yeah, do this one. Uh, hope this video's helped, and. Uh, sways you one way or another whether you want to build it or not i've enjoyed it it's been okay and uh yeah we'll leave it at that it's going on display now we all rest of my other stuff uh and uh i'm going to start with my next build which is an Ital italiari mig 23 flogger so uh keep an eye out for that one cheers <laughs>